How's it going? My name is Connor Whipple, assistant coach at Bucknell University. And what I'm going to be talking to you guys today is about extra man offense, uh, not just from a personnel or drill standpoint, but also from a schematic standpoint. Before I begin, I want to say thank you to the Richmond staff for putting this together and allowing coaches across the country to be able to share their own ideas and thoughts for all of us to grow uh, and get better. Uh, in addition to that, everyone that's watching, I hope you're safe. Um, out there during this unprecedented time and doing your due diligence to quarantine so we can get through this as soon as possible. So the main thing we need to figure out in creating an EMO group is figuring out what our objective is. Um, there's a couple key concepts that come together in terms of having the most uh, chance of success, and that is making the defense rotate. Uh, allowing the defense to rotate forces unsettled situations um, an opportunistic uh, chances for your own personnel. In order to do that, you know, it's important to have uh, crisp ball movement. And, and by having that, you need good timing and then spacing. And then lastly, taking high percentage chance of shots. So you can see that uh, diagram at the bottom. You see the eight yard um, and in range is uh, the highest chance of scoring and something that we strive to get most of our shots from. Um, and then that 12 yard range. Uh, everything else outside of that, we would kind of qualify that as a low percentage shot, even though if it were to go in, that's not necessarily the shot we're looking for um, in having a, success, a successful man up unit. When it comes to creating our man up, uh, the main thing we look for is stick skills. We value stick skills more than shooting because a lot of times if you put together six players that have the highest stick skills on the team, they're going to be able to move the ball faster, get that defense to rotate, uh, find uh, their teammates on uh, the backside or weak sides, wide open dunks, and allowing you to have easy layups instead of taking a really hard outside shot from the perimeter, which is not necessarily what you're really looking for in a man-up unit. When it comes to putting your top six players uh, on the field, you don't always need your top three uh, attackmen and then your top three middies. You may have a player on your team that might be elite in finishing and have a very unique skill set that might be very advantageous to use in an EMO situation. So he might be a guy you would want to sub in, whereas maybe you might have a midi or a player that is not that great at scoring, but might be good at initiating. So he might not be as valuable in a six on five scenario. In addition to that, we also want players that have high IQs. Uh, it's very important for our man up unit to be able to diagnose uh, what defense that man down um, unit is in, whether that be a five man, uh, string, box in one, or if they're going to be shutting off or pressuring in certain situations. Uh, it's very important to be able to recognize um, and know what looks are going to be open based on what sets um, or what kind of style that defense is playing. And then lastly, attitude. It's very important for our guys to be unselfish, being able to give up a good shot for a great shot for a wide open teammate, uh, even though if it may have a higher uh, chance of scoring for yourself, um, you might have a better look with a teammate. And then lastly, you know, you need to be confident and focused. Uh, scoring um, in, an in an uneven situation like this is obviously one of, gonna be one of the higher chances of scoring you have in a game, uh, as it is so hard to score six on six. So it's very important that your players take it very seriously and execute efficiently. When it comes down to you know, philosophies with an extra man unit, you have two kind of styles. You have set plays uh, philosophy, and then you have more of a freelance philosophy. So in breaking down uh, the set play type philosophy, um, that's oftentimes used for a team that might have maybe one or two very good players. And you might want to always have set plays that allow them to have the final shot or put them into very advantageous situations and able to score. Um, a lot of different type of set plays might be end line plays, um, a hidden ball or a fake flip, um, a quick hitter, um, and then also having 30 second um, play or a minute play based on the situation. The other kind of style you might have is more of a freelance look. That might be just changing sets or adding in easy three-man, four-man 
uh, five-man rotations. Um, and those also can be very effective, although that puts more uh, freedom within the players and allowing them to make decisions and a little bit less control from a coaching perspective. Um, freelance could be very successful if you have a man-up unit that is extremely skilled and they're all evenly talented. Um, so it might not necessarily matter who's taking what shot or if you all have very, very high IQs on that man up unit, having a freelance kind of style might be very um, beneficial for you as well. So the way we teach it here is breaking down man up units into three different segments. You know, your first segment is more of your starting out set, kind of a base set. Then you'll have your second segment, which is kind of your change of formation or getting into your set play. And then your final kind of man up segment is kind of that last 10, 15 seconds within the man up uh, that might be just a freelance 3v3 or whatever kind of set you end up in um, and more so that playing in the gray type aspect. Breaking down that first uh, segment, you know, that'll be your starting set. So it's very important during your starting set, um, you're kind of disguising what you're gonna run. So you could always come up with something new each week and you could always start out in a different set. Uh, it's very important to use this opportunity to get the ball around, get everyone comfortable and settled in within the man up, uh, especially if it's a minute penalty. Um, and then also kind of see what that defense is running. You know, are they shutting someone off? Are they pressing on someone in a certain situation? Um, so you can see here in that diagram, um, in the example, we're going to start out in a one for one and I'm going to kind of show you guys a man up play that I just drew up. Um, that'll kind of explain um, how each segment will go. So that second segment um, is when you're gonna get into your set play or your formation change, whatever you may choose. Um, a lot of times, you know, your set play, uh, that can be tailored towards having a very good finisher and a great shooter or um, anything of that nature. A lot of times it may be tailored also towards uh, the weakness of that man down unit that you're about to play. So the diagram that we have here, we have player three carrying it uh, behind X with a step off uh, coming. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit it uh, down the backside and we're gonna have a little slip cut and a step down shooter. So very simple, we're working the two pipes, uh, putting that defenseman on the inside in a very tough situation. So uh, the second segment continued, um, we have to be very prepared for what if it's scouted and the defense does a great job, and they always know that we really like to carry and look to throw back to that backside, and that might be a common theme that we usually run in our man up plays. So the defense did a great job, they scouted it, and they fly out and they pressure behind, and they take away that throwback pass. That is very important for you as a man up coach to be able to set something up as more of a plan B, so if it gets blown up, you're not just done with that set play. So here uh, you can see the defenseman pressures out on number three, who's carrying it behind. And then we quickly move it to, and then we have a backside uh, pick slip um, and player number two is coming up um, for a shot. So it's very important that you give your guys options in case there is um, you know, a defense that is gonna be aggressive, may press out uh, and might throw some junk at you. And it's very important to be able to adjust um, on the fly. So moving into that third segment, that's kind of after your set play has been run. Um, and what if you didn't score? So in this situation, you know, the defense had just pressed out, we moved the ball around to player one, and we didn't get a good look. Um, so we're going to settle into a three, three. So you can see here on the diagrams, we're moving over into a three, three pressing up from behind. Um, and this is a great time where you might have maybe 10, 15 seconds where you can settle into that more of that freelance look and kind of see what that defense is giving you. When you're finishing up that freelance look, uh, you'll have a couple options. You know, you can use different types of rotations, whether that be a four man, three man, a five man rotation, or even just a simple shallow cut. Um, a lot of times that can cause a lot of different kind of um, communication errors within the defense. Um, or maybe it's also best that you don't want to uh, have any other rotations and you just want to stay in your set. That's perfectly okay. Although just know there's different options that you can have um, 
you know, once that set play is over and you're in that 3-3 freelance, you might be able to add a little bit of wrinkles here and there um, to maybe cause a little bit more confusion to give you guys a better chance of scoring. So uh, I thank you for watching this. Um, if you have any questions on EMO philosophies or different kind of styles, uh, my email is below. I would love for you to reach out to me um, or even anything if you want to add. Uh, I hope everyone does well during this unprecedented time. And uh, thank you.